Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. First of all, yes, I know I need a haircut, I've got to get that sorted out. But this video is not going to be a tutorial or a Blender related thing, it's just going to be a bit of an update. You probably read the title, I'm probably going to make it something quite vague and generic, like what happened to me. Uh, basically, if you've been following me on like social media or Patreon, or if you've just been like active in the Discord, you might know that I've had a few struggles recently, like, well, over the last couple of years, but mostly the last couple of months, because things have got like progressively worse. And I've been quite vague about it because it's been like quite a confusing thing to deal with. And I did make a kind of promise to myself a while ago not to do any like public service announcements or, you know, selfish videos on this channel, even though it's my channel. But I figured this one might actually be important enough to talk about because it might explain some of the reasons why I've slowed down so much over the last couple of years when it comes to like making things. I've got people that give me money because they're invested in certain projects and it just kind of feels like I should keep people up to date on this kind of thing. So what's the quick rundown? Over the last few years I've been struggling with some vestibular problems. These have been quite complicated because it kind of ties into a lifelong issue. Since I was a little child I've been very sensitive to migraines, all right? So not headaches. I want to clear that one up right away, okay, not headaches, migraines. So they started off as just like a lot of dizziness problems, like some days you'll be feeling sick for no particular reason, you'll be hypersensitive to any kind of motion, and you'll be like super lethargic and just like your emotions shut down and all that kind of thing. That was frequent enough as a child that my parents got a bit concerned, so I got investigated at hospital for a while and they discovered a couple of things, most of them are just like genetic quirks, like Gilbert syndrome or Gilbert syndrome. We tend to have like low platelets as well, I have a large spleen, which is usually an indication of some kind of like other medical problem but they couldn't find anything so I think it's just a quirk but that also makes me more prone to infections because it gives me lymphocytopenia. Anyway I probably shouldn't like give you my entire medical record but some of that may be the reason why the migraines are a thing and it kind of got a bit weird during school like occasionally I'd go a bit blind. I remember one occasion in like a parents evening at school looking at teachers while they're you know trying to talk to your parents about how good you've been and noticing that their eyes were disappearing or like different other facial features were just like like starting to remove themselves from existence. So that's what you call like an ocular or a visual migraine. So it kind of like changed over time. And then after school, as I got out, I, they started getting a bit more serious. So hemiplegic migraines, which are ones where you basically like lose control over half your body. You lose the ability to speak. You go blind again. You get this really weird pins and needle sensation, which isn't like usual pins and needles. It's like, imagine there are bugs crawling around your skin and you can like specifically identify where they are as they crawl around. But if they're on your face, you notice that they stop exactly halfway, it's because one half of your brain is having this migraine event. And you just have to kind of sit through it. Some drugs help, but you know, most of the time you just have to deal with it for like 20 to 40 hours, depending on how long it lasts. Anyway, so that's just like basic stuff. I, I've been very used to that. Over time, I started noticing some other things. So for example, weird quirks like imagine you're sitting at a table and your feet are flat on the ground and then you just want to relax a bit. So, you know, you turn your butt a bit, maybe you roll your foot sideways slightly. And then as soon as my foot would roll, my head would spin out. Like I'd have all this dizziness, my eyes would start spasming and sometimes that would trigger right into a vestibular vestibular migraine where again you're knocked out you have to lay in bed for like two days you feel extremely sick you can't move your head properly because it just feels like it's multiplied you get all this little weird sparkly stuff all of that just because I rolled my foot sideways it's not always that sensitive and we'll kind of get more into that and it's also not just that that causes it for example one that happened recently was that I was staying in a hotel over the Christmas time and just laying there flat on the bed I noticed that my head started to spin out again and I went all dizzy and it was because there was one tiny bit of a duvet cover slightly under my elbow on an otherwise flat surface. So I noticed that over time my brain was like becoming hyper hypersensitive to like slight weird, tiny, inexplicable adjustments in like a sense of balance. It's also really bad if like I'm sitting on a chair. The worst thing someone can do is touch the chair. Like if, if, if the chair slightly wobbles, I'll notice that I'm becoming detached from reality. I might even not notice what's causing it, but I'm sitting there, I'm starting to feel weird and sick and it's like you're just detaching and then eventually your eyes start spasming. It's called nystagmus until I notice that it's because someone is wobbling the chair. So that was fun, but again, I learned to deal with that. It's the reason why my, my microphone is on a static stand rather than one of these like wobbly arms, right? Because if the arm was wobbling while I'm at the computer, my brain will get confused and it will trigger other vestibular migraines. It's also why my chair 
has flat bases rather than being a swivel chair where I can, you know, spin around and have fun. Oh, I missed that. No, it's very flat. Everything is very static. I've kind of like adapted my workspace over the years to account for the fact that I'm hyper balance sensitive. So again, that's not like any of the weird stuff that's been happening recently. Over the last few years, the reason I've been struggling is because some issue came along which cut right through the heart of those things I've just described. That flared them up to such a degree that I was unable to work properly. So this is where we talk about BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, right? Which is something that, you know, a lot of people get. I think everyone, almost everyone gets it at some point in their life, right? You might have experienced this where maybe one day you notice that when you look down, ooh, suddenly you feel dizzy, but when you look back up, you're okay. Or maybe if you look up, you feel dizzy and then everywhere else is okay, right? It's a very positional thing. The kind of leading theory behind that is that in your inner ear, you have your labyrinth, which is basically structured like an organic gizmo for my Blender followers out there. You know that in digital 3D space, we have our X, Y, and Z coordinates and you can rotate objects around that. The labyrinth looks almost like an organic version of that you have these different loops and inside of these loops are rather complex layers you've got like your hairs which essentially detect movement in a fluid in the ear and that sends signals to your brain to let it know what's happening right with the body like where are we laying are we standing where's the sense of gravity are we moving forward backwards like what's the momentum doing so you have all of these hairs in there and it's quite complex because there's like a gel layer and then there are these kind of calcite crystals called otoconia and the main theory behind bpbv is that these crystals become detached and they basically become debris inside of the canal so as you're moving around you have these little crystals that are essentially disrupting the flow of the fluid interacting with those layers with those hairs and giving your brain confusing signals as you get older, it's more common to have this for any number of reasons. I mean, your body stops working properly. I think it's largely to do with like mineral deficiencies, but we'll get onto that. But it can be very, you know, confusing and distressing, especially for people that have it to such a degree that when they're walking, they're afraid of falling over. That's quite a common thing for like older people with BPPV because they can't necessarily survive a fall, you know? So I started noticing that something was a little bit weird with my usual sense of balance. In about 2021, I would say, you may know that we're in the process of like moving to a new house, I'll get a new studio. The renovation starts next month, which should be exciting. Um, when we first went to view that house, I remember on the day saying something weird to my parents. I noticed that every time I looked left, I felt a bit sick, but every time I looked anywhere else, I felt fine. It wasn't necessarily like my balance was wrong. I just thought, this is weird. Like you would forget about it for a while, like you'd be doing something, you know, get something out of the fridge, do a bit of work. And every time you look left, you thought, oh, that's what is that? As the days progressed, I noticed that my eyes were reacting differently, like when I looked that way. So if I look to the right, hey, I could lock onto a target perfectly. And I've tried to animate this in Blender. I'll tr maybe try and like show it on the screen. But I noticed if I look to the left, my eyes went too far very briefly. Like you have a target to lock onto, but your eyes go, woof. And I was like, why is that? Why is it just the left side? And of course, like I spoke to my family. So my mum told me that when she was around my age, she had BPPV. And I was like, okay, let's look into that. There are maneuvers you can do to try and like realign the crystals in your inner ear, essentially get them to a point where they can be more easily absorbed because your inner ear actually dissolves those crystals over time. So a lot of these occurrences of BPPV actually just spontaneously disappear after a while, unless you have like a chronic issue. Spoiler. So I did some maneuvers called the Epley maneuver. You uh, kind of need to figure out which ear you think is affected and then you do certain maneuvers by holding your head at certain angles to try and reposition these crystals. And that did work sometimes. Here's the thing. With BPPV, the way doctors diagnose it is by doing something called the Dix Hall Pike maneuver, which is where you kind of sit down on a bed, you turn your head to a certain angle and then you flip backwards. So your head is kind of like pointed backwards and then they watch your eyes. And then if your eyes start spasming, they know that that ear is the one that's affected. So they basically watch for symptoms to appear. The thing that I've noticed over these last couple of years of dealing with the problem is that not everyone has the eye spasming, right? And that's an issue because that's the main thing doctors use to detect which ear has a problem. I don't get the eye spasming necessarily. What I get is just a weird, ooh off sensation. So over the months, right, every time I had a bit of a weird issue again where I would feel randomly off balance or like I wouldn't be able to acquire targets properly on one side 
of my head. I would do the maneuvers and then usually it would go away. So the maneuvers mostly worked, all right? Um, not every time, because the thing is there are different canals in your inner ear and depending on where those crystals detach, they will present themselves in different ways and different maneuvers will be required to kind of get them into a more comfortable position. And if you do the wrong maneuvers, you can risk making the situation worse. So I have spent the last couple of years making as many notes as I can. Every time I felt off balance in some weird way, I would make a note about it, then do some maneuvers, then make notes on the results. Because I knew that because I'm not presenting the symptoms in a way that would be easy for a doctor to diagnose, I'd kind of have to do this myself. Now there are other aspects, right, to the diagnosis. So for example, there are doctors that use these goggles in vestibular clinics, which kind of block everything out so your brain isn't using visual reference. So when you're doing the Dick's Hallpike maneuver, they may detect some like micro spasms that might not otherwise be detected by just using the human eye. I think that may have been some of the issue with me because, well, as we talk a bit more about the neurological issues, going back to this, you know, weird foot placement thing, I think I may rely much more heavily on visual stimuli than regular people, which may be part of an ongoing problem. Okay, but that's fine, right? So this BPPV thing happens. We don't know why. Um, usually it's a bit weird for it to happen to younger people. But like I said, it's run in my family. My mum, one of my cousins had it at some point, who's younger than me, and one of my aunties as well, roughly around the same time. Time. But the problem is, every time it went away, it came straight back again, and again, and again, and again. And they weren't always so simple to get rid of. So this is where the migraines come back in. And this is where things get more serious. Serious in the way that it actually prevents me from living. You see, the BPPV episodes, they were mostly okay to deal with. So long as I just like sat down, kept my head still, I'd be okay, right? So I can still work at a computer. I still have the weird quirks where if I sit in a bad way, then I'll feel like sick and dizzy. But you know, mostly we can still do work. But they started getting more intense in the way that they lasted longer. The symptoms kept changing. So some days it would look like it was the left side that was affected, other days it would look like it was the right side. Some days I'd feel like really dispresent, some days I would still feel present, but it would be like weird and diagonal and they would just keep changing. So every day it felt like my brain was using different software to interpret balance. Like every day you had to kind of relearn how to detect stuff like around you. And then the migraines would come. So the way this happened, I will be sitting at a computer and I caught this on video once while recording. It was very distressing. And then you will get a visual vestibular mismatch sensation, which is essentially again, where you're sitting there, everything looks fine, but all of a sudden you feel like you're disconnecting from reality. As you're doing this, you can feel that something is wrong balance wise. People describe it in different ways. To me, it doesn't really feel like anything. Some people say it's like the world is moving around you or like there's an earthquake going on. I don't really get that. You just feel like you're disconnecting from reality and you're starting to feel sick and you can start to feel that your eyes want to do something. That something is the spasming called nystagmus. Now for me sitting at a computer, when that happens, what I usually do is get up as fast as I can and find some frame of reference to ground myself. Like I will push against a wall. I'll show my brain there's a flat surface or I'll push down on the floor. This is flat. Like, please stop spasming out. It's okay. Like this is flat, but there's a threshold, right? If I sat at a computer for a couple of seconds too long, it's game over. It's a runaway effect into a migraine. There's nothing you can do about it. I have to deal with it. This is again something I had kind of noticed, right, going back in time, even before the BPPV started, when I would have hypersensitive days where if I turned my foot the wrong way and I started, you know, spasming out, that's how I would deal with it. I would get up very quickly, I would ground myself and it would go away. But this BPPV thing made the situation much worse because now there are extra confusing signals going into the brain and for other reasons we'll get onto, I felt like my body was now just in a much more sensitive state for migraines. So while I'd be sick, there, I'd disconnect from reality, I'd start feeling dizzy, I'd get up and try as I might, it was completely futile. I would stand up, I would go to the bathroom, I'd look at myself in the mirror and just everything would go wrong. You'd feel dizzy, you'd feel sick, the world would start to feel like it's moving in random directions, your eyes would start spasming, you'd start getting this kind of sparkly thing. As long as you kept your eyes open, you feel like you're about to throw up, the only thing you can do is lay down. But the problem is when you lay down, you submit yourself entirely to what your brain is doing. Because while you're up and you're aware and you're looking around, you're fighting against it. The world around you is giving you this visual information. And when these migraines are happening, it feels like they're trying to inject 
fake information. Like, they're trying to interpret balance, but it's wrong. It's like a short circuit of some kind. That's what it feels like. So when you've got your eyes open and you're standing up, you're fighting back against it, but it's slowly winning. So that's why you can feel your eyes starting to spasm and you're trying to stop it from happening. It's not very nice, and if you stayed like that, you're gonna throw up. The only thing you can do is lay down. So you lay down, but of course you shut off that visual stimulus, so now whatever your brain is doing in its short circuit mode is gonna take the forefront. So as you lay there and you shut off that sense, your eyes, they take complete weight and it's just spasm, spasm, spasm. You're starting to become more sensitive. Your sense of the world starts moving around. But for me, it's not always consistent, right? So it'll feel like the world's going like that and then front and back and then like diagonal and then sideways and it keeps like doing this weird shifting thing. If you try and open your eyes, not only are they spasming, but they're now drifting in a weird direction. Eye drift isn't necessarily like a, an uncommon thing. You might notice this if you lay down in bed and you look at the ceiling at night, sometimes your eyes drift in a direction. They don't usually do that. They're not really supposed to do that, but sometimes it happens, right? Because there's not much visual reference. But when you have a migraine like this, they're going, woo, speed racer across the ceiling. This is also a thing where some some symptoms are very similar between different medical problems, right? So for example, BPPV by itself can give you an eye drift. Usually though, that drift changes direction. So say you're laying back during a maneuver, you might notice that your eyes start going up instead of sideways because your eyes are actually just reacting to the information in your inner ear. The migraines are different though, for me, because it's like a software problem almost, where your brain is short circuiting, the information it's giving you is not related to the inner ear specifically. So the eye drift does not change direction no matter where you put your head. So we've gone from like a mechanical set of balance problems to a non-mechanical set of balance problems. Does that make sense? That's kind of what it feels like. Now the vestibular migraines, they last for like 40 hours. They die off and they will last for different amounts of time for different people. You can take anti-sickness drugs. They're not always a good idea because one of the important things about having balance problems is letting your brain readjust to your sense of balance. And a lot of these anti-sickness medicines interrupt that signal process so they can actually make it harder for your brain to readapt after the fact. And again, I just want to emphasize, I don't have headaches with any of these. So when we're talking about migraines, a lot of people think migraines are headaches. That's not true. A headache is a possible symptom of a migraine. It just happens to be like the most common. So that's why people associate it with that. Migraines tend to happen like in different areas of the brain, which is why there are different types like vestibular, hemiplegic, ocular, slash visual. So that's what made it difficult to work. I mean, you can imagine. I'm sitting there, I'm doing something in Blender, I'm editing, maybe I'm coding. All of a sudden, I just do something accidental, like I move my foot slightly, or something moves in my inner ear without me even knowing about it, and I suddenly feel, oh, detached from reality, oh no, it's starting, the mismatch feeling is occurring, I can feel my eyes are about to do something, okay, we need to save this, let's get up. If you don't get up, which I have done before, then it's game over immediately. There's a lot of like contention between doctors and vestibular specialists. They say you shouldn't actually get up, you shouldn't react, because the anxious sensation of being scared of what's happening to you is actually affecting how your brain's perceiving balance. Well, I call bullshit on that for this specific event because I have sat there while it's happening before and it was not good. <laughs> like I said, I've saved it by getting up quickly right, and giving myself a frame of reference. But over the last couple of years, that stopped working. I know this is getting very confusing, but that's why I've held off from talking about this. There's more to go through because it gets more complex. So these episodes were getting worse and worse. The BPPV, like the weird, oh, something's weird, balance sensation was getting more frequent. The migraines in between these episodes were also getting more frequent. So I was going between these more predictable balance sensations to these weird spikes of like software problems. And every time I would come out of one, I'd go back into the other. So my sense of balance was completely f***ed. I probably shouldn't swear so much. In between these moments, I would find some time to work. Now recording is actually really bad for this because the way that I had it set up, you're looking sideways and up at a camera, there's light, the walls are weirdly lit because the light's bouncing around the room, you look back at a screen, sometimes things wobble as you're moving around and you're gesticulating. It's a confusing experience. So recording was some of the worst times for this because it helped to amplify or trigger some of these bad situations and I caught it on camera. You can actually see that here. One of these moments where I was 
kind of, you know, talking. You can see how I suddenly notice something's wrong. I take a moment because I try to like, sometimes, right, when it starts, if I stop and I just take note of the environment, it does just stop by itself. So I think you can see that there's a moment where I just try and realize what's actually happening. And then when I notice it's going to progress, you know, I get annoyed and I just have to leave. That was the start of a two day migraine where I couldn't do any work for 48 hours. So obviously it got to a point where I was like, right, I definitely need to see a specialist. <laughs> Um, but this is where we diverge from the dogma, as Kang says, uh, because subjective issues. This issue has gotten too complicated for a single doctor to solve. Okay, so you're now listening to Curtis from the future. I'm basically editing the video at the moment, so I want to throw in some extra information. Um, this next segment is basically me explaining what happened when I went to the neurologist. And I'm just going to read from my notes because some extra stuff has happened since the video was recorded. So at this point in the story, I went to see a neurologist for the issues. I was a bit disappointed because I didn't feel like I had been listened to properly because I was told that it's probably not BPPV because only old people get it. I did mention to the doctor at the time how I managed to make most of the episodes disappear with positional maneuvers and how it had run in the family. I specifically explained how I was not in an episode at the time but I wanted help because they kept coming back. At the appointment they did some basic vestibular tests involving things like walking in a straight line heel to toe which is the kind of thing that you know the police do to tell whether you're drunk. Um, of course nothing weird flared up because I wasn't in an episode. However at one point they did this head cracking test where they crack your head from side to side while getting you to look directly at them so they can basically see what happens with your eyes. This was then followed up by another Dick's Hall pack maneuver which didn't show up any nice stagmas because as I said before I didn't really get that with these episodes. They only really happen with the hallucinatory feedback from visual vestibular mismatch leading into migraines. But here's one thing to keep in mind. For people suffering with chronic BPPV episodes, one of the worst things you can do is make sudden head movements, because you may effectively be detaching more crystals. This is what happened during the appointment. A few days prior, I had just come out of an episode and I finally felt great. I went into the doctor who proceeded to crack my head from side to side and then tilt me backwards for the Diggs Hall Pike, and this process had accidentally triggered a new BPPV episode. Now at this point there may be some doctors listening to this video now that are contesting my theory, who might be thinking, oh, he keeps saying he's got BPPV, but it doesn't sound like it does, maybe he's just overreacting. Well, like I said, more stuff has happened since the video was recorded, and I am now completely confident that that's what was happening. So we're going to get into more of that. But at this point in the video that we're returning to, I'm basically talking about how furious I was that a new episode had been accidentally triggered after I finally started feeling okay. I feel like I had nowhere to go because it's something that couldn't be easily caught. It's something that couldn't be easily explained. It was a mix of subjective and much more mechanical symptoms, and it just felt like there was something that no single doctor could deal with. So the one thing I do when I can't find a solution to a problem is try to make one myself. So that's what we're going to get into now, and you may hear back from me with some more information a bit later on. And because I keep forgetting to add really important bits of information, the doctor did schedule me in for an MRI brain scan and IAM scan, which is essentially the auditory canal. And yes, something of importance did flare up on the scan. Maybe we can come back to that a little bit later in the video. But anyway, I went home and of course, things got worse because that head cracking had set off a new episode. So at that point, I was furious. And the thing is, when I get furious, I have like maybe different reactions to other people. I start building things or start designing things. So my thing was, okay, doctors won't help me. Realistically, I should go to a vestibular clinic at that point. And maybe I still will do right in the future because I'm not completely over it. But I was like, Fuck it. I'm going to solve this myself. I'm going to build a system to solve this. I already had a good technique. I keep track of everything I do. Every time my problems gets better or worse, I have already kept track of everything I was doing during the day, everything I ate, when I went to bed, when I woke up, like what I'm drinking, etc. I have all this data. I just need to write a program to identify patterns. If I can't find the cause, I will help the symptoms. AI would be great to do this. I also invented tests for myself. I'll give you an example. So I had one I called the target retention test, which is where if you look up at a certain angle and you find a fixed point, count to 10, 20, 30, grade them one to three. At some point, your eye will want to diverge right? That's something I've noticed. It will try and there'll be like this little balance tick as it tries to diverge. That was quite strong during these episodes. I couldn't fixate on a point for more than five seconds without it diverging. So I invented little tests like this I could repeat, just measurements. And as soon as you come up with tests, you get data. Another test I called like the, um, the switch test or something like that, which is where if you lay down in bed, there's a moment where your brain again shuts off from using like your regular sense of balance as you start to relax into a laying down state. During these B PPV episodes, when I would relax enough in bed, I would get this sudden whoo. And it's not like that sudden wake up sensation, right? That a lot of people get. It's different. You just get this like sudden whoo 
like sideways kick as your brain like stops listening to one sensory source and then just kind of relaxes into its state and it'd be quite consistent so I would make a note about that like did this happen on this day yes or no so more tests give you more data and if you have data you can identify patterns so I started thinking like really hard about okay we can write a script that looks back a certain amount of time measures how bad things were on these tests right and then looks at the diet looks at things I was doing and then tries to identify oh okay when we do this we're actually better for a certain day parallel to this I was also making changes so for example I added more supplements to my diet because I was already taking supplements for some you know older conditions I added riboflavin which is apparently quite good for migraines and k2 because I had a theory about k2 this is where we get into dietary stuff I hate milk my calcium intake doesn't really look that great from a dietary standpoint but the blood test I'd always done whenever I had other problems they never looked for calcium I had a theory that not having a good calcium uptake ever in my life might have been a reason why these calcite crystals in the inner ear may be super present or not being absorbed properly. Why well, I looked this up, you know, I kind of joined BPBV communities, had a look through different people's experiences and noticed that other people were saying the same thing. A lot of doctors recommend vitamin D. Apparently this has also got something to do with calcium. I was already taking vitamin D supplements. I was already deficient. So I started taking riboflavin and K2 and trying to like increase my calcium uptake. But after a while, this didn't really do anything still and you know I was kind of lost so in parallel I was making these changes to try and improve the diet just running through some theories about why this kept happening while also starting to think about making a new type of software that would be able to like track my day-to-day -day behaviors and try and identify patterns to improve the symptoms and I nearly started like properly building that and then I made a bit of a breakthrough like in this dietary theory thing this is where it might get a bit controversial if there are some doctors watching since 2020 I have been taking a proton pump inhibitor. I like the idea of like some people watching going, where is this going? And other people watching going, oh, okay. That might explain something. Proton pump inhibitors basically, um, they're to deal with stomach acid, right? If you have like reflux issues, which I have had quite a lot of historically, I had an endoscopy to check things. This goes back to an old breathing issue I was having. I had a biopsy on my stomach tissue. Everything was fine. It was a subjective issue again. So I have a history of like weird sensory problems. Back then it was because I was having these breathing issues. It wasn't caused by COVID. Everything looked perfectly fine. But when I would have a very specific dietary combination, we haven't identified it exactly but it's something in cream and butter and some milk right it's it, I'm not lactose intolerant my body's fine with that but there's something specifically in it I think it's some kind of protein that when I have it or too much of it it just shuts off my ability to sense air in my lungs it's not a physical reaction it doesn't like change anything in my stomach or my lungs it's like a purely sensory thing it was very weird but anyway I've been taking a proton pump inhibitor lansoprazole for about three years I just happen to be taking it every day because you know not having reflux was more fun than having reflux I had the intuition to maybe look up whether there was a correlation between taking lansoprazole or any other PPI and incidences of BPPV and it turns out there is it hasn't been properly studied right so there's still like a lot of stuff in the air about it but if you just take a quick look on google ppi use was linked with an elevated risk of bppv in the adult population the odds of bppv were higher in patients with longer duration of ppi use basically the longer you use it it seems that the more elevated risk you are at getting bppv episodes and then i started reading into it a bit more okay why is that it's because apparently proton pump inhibitors as they're reducing the stomach acid and or kind of like lining your stomach they make it harder for your body to absorb certain minerals. I think some of the risky ones were calcium, B12 and magnesium. There may be some others. Let me just try and find a source for you. So I have a paper here, proton pump inhibitors and risk of vitamin and mineral deficiency, evidence and clinical implications. It is a very interesting read. Okay, so I don't ever recommend taking, you know, like single studies as evidence of something being true or false, but this was just a line of thought that got me like really fascinated because the idea of this being one of the reasons suddenly made everything make so much sense. So according to this study, the main vitamins at risk of being like malabsorbed are B12, which by the way, again, hereditary, we have issues with that in the family. B12 absorption, my mum has to get injections. I was already taking supplements for that. Vitamin C, I don't even have many fruits anyway. Calcium, again, I was quite low dietary speaking. I would have like a yogurt in the evening, I suppose. But again, if like the lansoprazole was making that difficult to absorb then was I actually getting any? Iron being another one and magnesium apparently quite important for migraine prevention as well. So this was fascinating. I was like no way can it be just one thing but then I thought well 
I've been, I've had a bit of an oversight because there were some other things I noticed that ju I just never clicked. My lips started getting dry when these BPPV episodes were getting like really intense. And I wasn't sure why, I just thought, okay, well, maybe it's because it's cold. But then I was like, no, these are deficiencies again. I noticed that something I'd never seen before because I started growing my nails out because I started painting them. I wouldn't have noticed this if I didn't start painting my nails because I kept biting them, was that they were getting a bit like flaky at the end, which I'd never seen before because I never let them grow. I was like, well, that's a deficiency sign again. My eyes have been twitching. I've been having like weird mental health things going on, like little disassociations. I was like, okay, well, if it's possible that this drug has been preventing me from absorbing minerals, then I should obviously stop taking it or at least slow it down. So I did. And this is where we're going to touch wood. I have not had a single BPPV episode since I stopped taking Lanzaprazole. As now I know, okay, as soon as I say that it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen as soon as I stop this recording. I know it will. Cause okay, in the UK we have something called Sod's Law. It's a bit like Murphy's Law. You might've heard of this where like anything that can happen will happen. Sod's Law is like a more pessimistic take. It's like anything that can go wrong will happen at the most inconvenient time. So Sod's Law dictates that as soon as I stop recording, I'm gonna start a new BPPV episode. Okay, but here's the thing. When you think you find a solution to a medical problem, you need to make sure that it lines up with all of your experiences. So for example, there was one point when I was trying to figure all of this out and I thought I understood things properly. I was like, okay, well, the migraines are triggered because at some point in the BPPV, a crystal falls and that gives me the mismatch sensation and that triggers the migraine. But then something broke that theory because I went to the Blender conference and some other creators will know that I did not have a good time at the end of the conference. It was three days and after those three days, I was sick. It was the morning I woke up. We were supposed to be going home. Thank God I had my family there. I woke up in the dark and I immediately knew something was wrong. I must have had a migraine start while I was sleeping, which does happen to me, especially during these problems. While I was looking around in the dark, I noticed, oh God, I'm hypersensitive. I'm feeling sick. What's going on? This is bad. Like something had started. I ended up throwing up into the hotel toilet. I took some anti-sickness drugs and like my parents had to guide me home and I felt awful. And and before someone else says, oh, you got a bug at the conference. Nope. A lot of people did get bugs at the conference. Not me. I had no other symptoms. These were just the perfect example of the balance problems I had been having just suddenly appearing spontaneously rather than progressively throughout an episode. And I was like, I did, I wasn't in one of these BPPV episodes. So why did that start? Like it didn't line up. The cause and effect didn't match. But when I started thinking about vitamin and mineral deficiencies, everything made sense because I wasn't eating. When we went to the conference, I had a complete nutrient crash because I didn't eat during the days. I was getting hungry. I was just like using little gel sweets and stuff to try and subside the hunger because I just didn't want to eat in front of people or I was too occupied, like talking to people, whatever. I just wasn't eating properly. It was a complete mineral nutrient crash. And that's a bad thing for migraines. So I was like, okay, well, this theory lines up. If I've had a problem absorbing nutrients and minerals, that would be one reason why BPPV episodes are spontaneously starting chronically because it's a problem that hasn't been fixed. At one point, I thought that too much calcium might be causing it, which doesn't make sense for me because as we said, the diet problem. So I was like, does it make sense that low calcium would cause it? Do doesn't more calcium make more crystals? Apparently no, apparently calcium deficiency is really bad for the inner ear. Anyway, so it made sense for that. And then it also made sense for the Blender Conference episode because a complete nutrient crash would explain why I spontaneously had a like hell of a migraine sicky problem after not eating for so long. I need to clarify, I did eat in the mornings, like a bit of breakfast at the hotel and in the evenings, like a bit of food that my parents would kind of bring along, but not much. And it'd usually just be like meat. But yeah, I didn't do a good job. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe it makes sense. So I'm going to show you something. I've been using Blender to visualize how bad the problem got and how awful 2023 had been up until this point. So take a look at this chart. Every time there's a red square, that's where I am incapacitated. I am laying in bed. If I open my eyes, even while I'm laying still, I will feel sick and throw up. So I need to keep my eyes closed. I need to be a log. The absolute definition of debilitated, unable to do anything. The second days I can usually like get up, but not move my head much. Just sit there like a apathetic statue. The orange days are days when I knew something was wrong with my balance. So inside of these BPPV episodes. The yellow days are when there's still something a bit quirky, but it's not super obvious. As you can see, February last month was terrible. We can also see a rough correlation when visualizing it like this, that things started to get worse 
after the Blender conference. Now a nutrient and mineral deficiency, to me, it makes sense that it's a long-term problem and that it gets progressively worse over time. And we can see that in the graph. I started taking Lansoprazole in 2020. I was fine to start with. Over time, over a few years, it got slowly more common for me to have these episodes. And then it slowly sped up after I had a nutrient crash during the three days of the Blender conference. I think that accelerated the problem until we ended up with like this peak moment at the beginning of this year, which made it extremely extremely difficult for me to work. So are you still with me? <laughs> Long episode. So that's the theory at the moment. I'm doing better, not perfect, better. I might be on the cusp of completely falling into another bad episode and maybe this entire theory is just a moot point. I don't know. But I did notice some other things when coming off Lanzaprazor. I noticed that some of my emotional reactions to things changed. Like they got better. I, I became more reactive to things. I noticed significant mental improvements that I didn't think I would. And they're not always consistent, right? As soon as I came off, I had like some kind of like whoa moments of feeling like more connected to reality again. And this explains some things because I was having like a few emotional or detaching from reality issues over the last few years, something that I tried to explain to my mum, but it was just really difficult to explain. And now it seems to make sense that some of these things might be connected. I'm still waiting for brain scan results. I expect they may come back clear. If they don't, there may be something frontal lobe related because this brings us on to like proprioception. Okay, Curtis from the future again. I do have the scan results, but I'm just going to let Curtis from the past finish his theory and discuss the remaining issues because I feel like it'll be interesting to hear that first. So the thing that still lingers is the thing I mentioned earlier about moving your foot the wrong way and then triggering an off balance sensation. Even though I'm not having these weird BPPV things anymore and I can look around going, yay, woo, I could look at targets without my eyes going haywire. Um, I'm still having that problem. Some days are worse than others. And again, I'm like, I'm trying to track the issues. I think there are some dietary things which make it worse. Caffeine is no good. Sometimes it's still really annoying. The most annoying moment, I would say, when you're laying in bed, imagine you have your duvet over you, but maybe you're up against a wall like I am here and your duvet is tucked in one side right so the duvet is kind of tighter on one side than the other you're laying there flat with your kind of feet pointed up or maybe a bit sideways you know under the duvet but my right foot if I move it into a position where the duvet is slightly tugging on the right toe so yeah, it's just like that. If you move your foot slightly too much and it's tugging on your toe, I'm laying there and my head goes, and it starts like falling out of balance again. Like it feels like it. So I have to quickly move my foot away from like the tighter side of the duvet. That's really annoying because I just want to relax. But again, it's like if you just move something the wrong way, your brain is, get, is like hyper fixating on this signal. And suddenly it's like, spinning out again. This is where we come to PPPD, called doctors and their acronyms. So PPPD, I'm gonna have to look up the full name. This is a relatively like newly studied thing, newly, like it's been around for a while. Persistent postural perceptual dizziness. This is a sensation of constant vague dizziness or fog, which has been present for more than three months and is usually worse on certain movements or busy places. The way it's described is kind of similar to what I'm experiencing. We're like busy scenarios, visually busy, make things worse. So for example, if I'm at a pub with someone and they're having a meal, we've got drinks on the table. If I'm resting on the table and someone wobbles it, I'll feel dizzy. Or if I'm just sitting there looking at the table and the glass is wobbling, like the like the liquid in the glass is wobbling, I will feel dizzy. Even if it's like in my periphery, if it's off to the side and there's some water going doot, 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 like slightly wobbling, I'll start feeling dizzy. Again, some days I'm more sensitive to it than others. I'm still trying to figure it out. There's a lot of theories about like your body being in an anxious fight or flight state. But the thing is, I was experiencing some of these sensations before any of this whole multi-year chronic series of episodes started. So this has been a lifelong thing. I've, I've remembered this sensitivity to balance ever since I was a kid. Apparently this kind of thing is quite common for people that are coming out of like BPBV or migraine episodes, but they need to like retrain their brain. Maybe that's something I need to look into, but I feel like I'm in a position where I've got it quite bad. Cause like I said, like if I, if there's just something under my arm while I'm laying in bed, or if my foot's in a weird position, then my brain can't really handle it. So that's where we are at the moment. I'm starting to get back on track with work. I'm starting to get my emotional responses back. I'm becoming more engaged with life again. I'm just feeling better generally. Hope. Let's just hope that I don't get another episode come along because I'm going to have to go into like full, like let's build AI software to help me track my patterns and try and solve this mode again. So we've solved the migraines for now, for now. We've solved the BPPV for now, for now. I'm still looking at this 
proprioception, persistent dizziness thing. By the way, proprioception, the way, I, the reason I'm using that word is because I thought I was going mad with this foot thing. I didn't know how to describe it. I thought that I've never heard anything like this before, like move your foot in a weird way and your head spins out. But apparently there's a sense in your body called proprioception and it's where you're basically using signals from your body to determine your balance. Something about my brain is listening to this in like overdrive and I don't know why still have no solution for that Curtis from the future here again that's interesting very very interesting listening to myself say about how I remember from a kid having a general sensitivity to balance and I always like kind of knew that there was something a little bit weird but I didn't know exactly what it was like in this whole theory there's just this one missing piece like why am I more sensitive than other people that like I ran through a whole bunch of different theories right there are a lot of possibilities people with ADD are kind of like more sensitive to sensory things maybe that's still part of it I've never been diagnosed but I always thought I had it people on the autism spectrum disorder also have sensory processing issues and I still think there may be something there but as it turns out from the scan I have something called superior semicircular canal dehiscence so just to explain that to you, superior canal dehiscence syndrome is an opening in the bone covering the superior semicircular canal of your inner ear. It's a rare condition that can cause problems with your balance and hearing. Most people can manage symptoms. If symptoms are severe, you may need surgery to plug the opening. So this is interesting because this is a thing. Like I knew that there's like a missing piece somewhere in this whole theory and this might be like that missing piece or part of it. But the weird thing about this is that even though I have it, according to the MRI scan, I don't have most of the symptoms that apparently come with it. There are things like, you know, loud noises making you dizzy. I've never had that. Like I've been to some really loud places before, never had my sense of balance change in response to a sound. Hearing loss? Nope, not that I've ever noticed. In fact, I think my hearing's pretty good. Heightened sensitivity to sound? Maybe. Um, I've got misophonia, as far as I know. Like, you know, there are some sounds that really annoy me, but again, that sounds more like an ADD or autism type thing. Autophony. So like hearing your voice or self-generated sounds, like breathing or blinking louder than normal. I can't hear myself blinking. Uh, people describe like hearing your eyes moving I don't have that I think the most I've had is maybe like hearing my neck creaking but I'm not even sure if that's specific to this so like if anything when I think about it okay maybe me having a hole in the bone covering of the canal has been giving me and this is just a theory extra white noisy balance signals throughout my life something that's made it more confusing for my brain to adapt to balance maybe this has made me more reliant on other signals such as my vision for example maybe this may be like the missing piece in this theory why do i have this kind of sensory processing issue and obviously though i'm not like an expert on any of these particular things i think this might be a possible answer for now it seems like i've solved the bpbv and i may have solved the migraines being triggered but now I've got this last remaining thing and if it is caused by this superior canal dehiscence syndrome then there's nothing I can really do about it other than surgery and I don't really want surgery and like considering I'm not having any of the other like major symptoms I, I don't really feel like I want to go through that. Um, so if my new new theory is correct about this kind of like white noise balance as I'm calling it um, I guess the, what I should do is rehab <laughs> so one thing they they do to like or they offer to bppv patients and vestibular migraine patients is vestibular rehabilitation therapy which i always kind of snubbed at a little bit because i was like okay so how effective is wobbling my head from side to side like in retraining my brain but okay maybe there might actually be some like utility for me in that if this syndrome has been confusing my brain without me knowing about it so yeah that's that's the detail. I'm trying to get how, like a hold of the images now from the MRI so I can actually, you know, do stuff with it, make 3D scans. But my God, the hospital that I got the scan at, that's so difficult to contact. They don't have an email. They, they don't have an email address. They used to, but now they don't. And like I phoned up and I got passed through like three people and then they passed me on to someone that, well, there wasn't anyone. It was just an answer phone and I had to leave a message. And it's really annoying. I'm trying to get the scans. I want to make my brain in 3D. All right. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll leave it for the rest of the video now. So yeah. Oh, what a long video. That was my problem. I was going in and out of these extreme dizziness, extreme sickness phases. It was extremely complex trying to figure out what's been going on, going from like these mechanical balance problems to these more software-ish balance problems, dealing with these spikes in what is essentially the feeling of your brain short-circuiting beyond your control. There are no drugs that can solve it. So yeah, I'm just in this like hopeful 
stage at the moment. Waking up to like the sense of a reality that I kind of missed a bit as what I expect is happening is that nutrients are now coming back into my brain and it's going, where have you been? <laughs> it is weird how different things have felt. Like it's, it's in the strangest places, like, cause it's things that you don't realize you miss. Like what, if I have like a breeze hit me, all of a sudden my brain is kind of like stimulated and I kind of like visualize places that don't exist. Like that's always been a thing. Like when I'm like positively affected by something emotionally, I get like visions of places that don't exist in my head. That's like, that's always been like my measure of, hey, you're doing well, like you're happy. And I didn't realize that I kind of lost that. Like I just wasn't, there was something not reactive there. That also happens like when I'm in love with someone, like if I have feelings for someone, if I look at them, I get like this kind of random, these visions that appear in my head, you know, just like places that you've never been. Maybe some of you have experienced something like that as well, but like I lost that and I didn't even realize it during these last few years that when I'm hit by something that would usually stimulate me, there was nothing. And that's kind of sad because you don't realize that you lose like a part of your mind or your soul like you kind of feel like you've lost a bit of your soul and i feel like i'm maybe getting a bit of that back so yes again like not a doctor but i do pay attention to a lot of what i experience and i don't want you to take anything from this video like oh proton pump inhibitors are bad because curtis said so look here's the thing like everyone reacts to things in different ways if this theory is true and it may still be wrong okay it may be completely wrong everything i've said in this video but if the theory is true and this keeps holding up then okay, maybe it's worth considering that that's a bit of a dodgy factor, a dodgy thing to be taking every single day for years. So yeah. Okay, you know what? Just to annoy the people that have been sticking around this long and really want the video to end, I'm going to try and condense everything down into one final theory. So this might be wrong. I was born with a genetic quirk which leaves me with holes in the top of my semicircular canals. Throughout my life, without realizing it, this has been letting some vibrational energy into the canals, disrupting the fluid. This has been giving my brain white noise. Over time while growing up, this white noise has led my brain to rely more on the visual and proprioceptive senses, meaning that my brain is more reliant on what I see and what I feel rather than what the inner ear is telling me. This is why I'm so hypersensitive to strange situations like bending my foot or my chair wobbling when I don't expect it. Separate to this, a few years ago I started taking a proton pump inhibitor. This may have unintentionally prevented me from absorbing essential minerals and nutrients, which accidentally, combined with my general lack of calcium, triggered recurrent BPPV episodes. This combined with my general sensitivity to migraines, having a history of migraines, led to an unfortunate side effect of sine waving between BPPV and vestibular migraine, giving confusing sensations not just to me as the experiencer, but also to my brain who was continuously trying to adapt. While coming off Lanzaprazole, the BPPV and vestibular migraines have reduced. This is also done in combination with adding riboflavin, K2, and one weekly calcium supplement to the diet. Provided that this theory is correct, the most sensible course of action for me now is vestibular rehabilitation therapy. Thank you for watching. If you made it all the way through, you must really care about me if you've watched it <laughs> like this far through. I'm trying to get back on track. All right. We're, we're working on it. There's exciting stuff happening. Like I said, building for the new house starts next month. Looking forward to moving down to the new place. Kind of looking forward to getting back on the dating scene because I've had to put that off for like a couple of years. Well, not really one year because it doesn't really make sense looking for someone here and then saying, hey, I'm leaving. Bye. Anyway, hope you're doing well. Let me know if you've been doing anything cool. You know, always looking for stuff to put in the community videos. Um, Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, of course, if you made it this far, put an emoji in the comments. What should we do? Uh, okay, well, a brain, because it makes sense, right? Like my brain's been deprived of things maybe, and now it's suddenly like trying to wake up again. Brain for good luck, or oh, crossed fingers, because I need that. Anything else? Nope. All right, I love you all. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.